Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, you know, you must be happier than any other Sundays. Because Amen. today, Christ has defeated the power of death. Amen. And he proclaimed victory forever. Amen. And that Christ is with you. That's why we have to live the life with the resurrected Christ. Amen. So before we, we begin, let's do our confession of faith. Jesus, Jesus is, is the Christ, Christ the, the Son of, of the, the living God. God. Amen. Amen. So once you have this unstoppable faith in Christ, the resurrected Christ is with you through the Holy Spirit. So whether you like it or not, your life is a life with the resurrected Christ. Amen. Amen. The life is guaranteed in the resurrected Christ. Life. Resurrected Christ. Now for today, for our scripture reading, we have read uh, so many verses. However, there, are, there is a reason why I did so. Because if you look at certain verses, you will see this phrase, with Christ, in Christ, four different times. In verse 3, 4, 5, and 8, it says, the Paul says to the Roman church, right? If you are baptized in Christ Jesus, that means... Christ is with you. Amen. You are in Christ. You are with Christ. So whenever Paul sends a letter to the churches, they always mention the name, right? David in Christ. You've been in Christ, right? In Korean, whenever Paul writes the letter to the church, every single time, because he wants to make sure that they are within Christ no matter what. Amen. Right? And the same goes for you. Whatever happens, you are in Christ. Amen. Who has finished everything on the cross. Right? So may you have this joy and happiness and true peace inside of Christ. So before we uh, begin our main part, we'll briefly talk about last week's public message. It was about the unstoppable faith. Faith. Unstoppable. Right? If you truly believe in Christ, no one can block you. No one can block this gospel that has no choice but to expand through life. So, what is an obstacle that hinders you from enjoying the power of God? Right? And the pastor gave us the immediate answer. The obstacle that hinders us from enjoying the power of God is our thoughts. Our thoughts and our disbelief. Whenever look at whenever we look at our situations, we are caught up with our thoughts and say, "Oh, it is impossible for me. It is possible for me. I think I can do this. I don't think I can do this." Right? Whenever problems arise, the first thing that comes up in your mind is whether I can do this or not. Right? And that is the very obstacle that hinders you from enjoying the power and the genuine power of God. And may you discard all your thoughts. May you restore true and absolute faith in Christ Jesus. Only then can you enjoy the power of God in your life. Okay? So when you are caught up with your thoughts, that means you are captured by the centerness. Me. That means whenever you become me-centered, Whenever you do choose and like, plan everything centered around yourself, what happens is your life becomes a playground for Satan to trick on. Which means your life becomes a channel through which Satan can attack. Right? Think about it. Satan used this strategy to break down the first enemy. Same thing. Whenever, whenever you leave your walk of faith, you need to get rid of your thoughts, your assertions, and your opinions. Why? Because today this verse was also mentioned in the Sunday message. <clears throat> Isaiah. Chapter 55, verses 8 to 9. This is the Lord. What the Lord says. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, then your thoughts. 
Yeah. Right? Think about it. Whenever you have to choose between the two, who do you resort to? Right? Whenever you have to make a decision, right? what do you rely on? Do you rely on God or do you rely on your own thoughts? Right? And that becomes your spiritual state. Right? That becomes your spiritual state. Right? And in addition, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25, it says, For the foolishness of God is wiser than men's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than men's strength. Right? Think about it. God's weakness is much greater than my power. And God's foolishness is much wiser than my wisdom. Then who will you trust? Right? Where will you put your hope into? Right? Something fleeting, something temporary, or something eternal, or something everlasting. Right? I want you to make the decision today. When you make the resolution, answer is on the way. When you make that resolution based on faith, the answers are bound to come. Right? So, and this God is with us and is our background. So you must restore the unstoppable faith to believe in this, that God is with us. Amen. The God of the living is with us. Amen. Just as today's message says, right? God who was with Abraham is now with us. Amen. He is not dead. Right? His word is being fulfilled even right now. Amen. Right? All you have to do is believe in this. Right? Because God doesn't need your power. God doesn't need your devotion. What he needs from you is absolute faith. Absolute faith. Right? So when you truly believe in this, your imprint will be changed. Because only the word of God can change your imprint. Because it is living and active. And your incorrect partisan within you will be destroyed. And God's absolute partisan will be established once you believe in this fact. So in order to do this, you need to open your spiritual eyes. You need to open your spiritual eyes. Right? We can, we can fathom the work of God with our own understanding. That's why today, Pastor Jung says, because we can fathom, measure, or understand the work of God, that's why we believe. Right? We need to believe in this. Then God will start working in your life. Right? I want you to really enjoy this in your walk of faith. And may you raise the absolute burden of Christ in your life. Amen? Amen. Right. Then, what kind of faith is it? It is the faith of only. Right? This Syrophoenician woman had this faith then if I meet this Christ, if I meet this Jesus Christ, my, my daughter, who is demon-possessed, would be healed. Yeah. That's why in Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15, verse 22, the same woman says, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. Right? Son of David. This phrase has a tremendous meaning. Right? You are the living Christ. You are the Messiah that was prophesied in the Old Testament, right? Son of David, who will come through the bloodline of David. You are that Messiah. You are that Christ. Have mercy on me. When I have the mercy from you, I will be healed. And my son, my daughter would be healed. Right? She had this faith of only, right? And she, she knew who this Jesus was, right? He was not just one of the prophets. He was not just one of the teachers, but he knew that he is the Christ and the living God, and the Son of the living God. And that's why we confess this confession every single time. You may think of it something, you know, trivial, but to Satan, whenever we make the confession, his kingdom is being destroyed. Amen. Right? Amen. Because Satan only fears the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And this woman brought her problem, not to people, but to Jesus Christ, right? This is the faith that we need to restore. What do you do when problems arise, right? What do you choose when problems come?
conflict or crisis arise. Right? Some people rely on humanism. They use humanism. Some others, they resort to their own experiences or feelings. Right? However, as a child of God, we must bring our problems to Jesus Christ because only then can we have true healing in our lives. Right? That's what this Syrophoenician woman did. Instead of going to people, instead of going to doctors, she went before Jesus Christ. Amen. Because she knew that when she meets this person, when she meets this Christ, then she would have true and genuine healing in her life. Amen. Amen. So why do we have to bring our problems to Jesus Christ? Why? Why? We have this spiritual formula. John chapter 19, verse 30. Because Christ has finished everything on the cross. This must become your spiritual formula. Whenever problems arise, you need to apply this formula to this problem. Then ultimately and accurately, you will have the God-given answer. Right? We have remnants here. Right? When, when, you have, when you have this math class, you sometimes memorize certain formulas to apply to certain questions. Right? And when you correctly apply this formula to the problem, then you can get the right answer. Same thing. As a child of God, instead of relying on humanism, I want you to use this spiritual formula of John chapter 19.30. Right? Whenever problems arise, you have to make this resolution, I will bring it back to Jesus Christ. Because He has finished it all. Amen. Right? Amen. He has finished. So, do not try to solve your problems on your own. Right? If you do so, that's going to make it worse. Right? So, please bring them before Christ. May you restore this faith of bringing all your problems before Christ so that you can enjoy and experience true healing taking place in your life. Amen? Amen. Right. Going into the body. Right? Of course, it is important to keep the feast of Easter. Right? Of course, it is crucial and important to keep Easter as a feast. However, we must know its genuine content of Easter first in order to receive true answers. You now, all Jewish people they were really eager to keep this feast. However, they lost hold of the core, the essence, the gist of this covenant. They, they built a temple with their kids. They built a tabernacle with their kids. They even uh, ate the unleavened bread with their kids, but they lost hold of the essence of the gospel. All the tabernacle represents Christ, but they lost hold of it. Same thing. Today, after worship, you will be given an uh, Easter egg. However, that is not the essence of the Easter. right? The essence of the Easter is that Christ has defeated the power of Satan, the power of death, and He resurrected and He is now with us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. You must go back to your field with this overjoy. You must go back to your school. You must go back to your workplace with this conviction. Christ has finished everything, and He is with us. Amen. Right? As long as you are within that faith, Satan cannot shake you. Right? So, the first thing that you need to keep in mind is that Satan has made the invisible partisan of destruction. Invisible. It is invisible. Satan has made this invisible partisan of destruction within our souls. Right? In the USA, right, which is one of the great nations, right, there are so many people who are addicted to drugs. Even though there are so many renowned scholars, renowned professors, and renowned doctors, but they don't even know why these problems arise. And even though they do know the reason for this problem, they can't fix it. And nowadays, drugs are rampantly spreading in Korea too. Not even the celebrities, but also these people distribute this drug to like kindergarten kids, like you no know, students out on the street. 
And people know that if they do drugs, their life would be devastated. But they cannot stop themselves from doing so. Why is it? Is it because they lack strong will? Is it because they lack good hospitals out there? Is it because they do not have good therapists out there? Or is it because they do not have renowned doctors out there? No. Even if sciences are de developing and the standard of living is on the rise, right? these curses continue to befall mankind. Continue to befall mankind. And even now, with our smartphone only, we can entertain ourselves. We can watch YouTube, we can watch Netflix, we can go online shopping, etc., etc. However, there are more people suffering from depression. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, they kill themselves. Mm -hmm. That's and not only that, the number of mental patients are on the rise. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Is it because politicians are not doing their job properly? Only the Bible tells us the reason why. Because Satan has made this invisible partisan of destruction within you once we become separated from God. Oh, God. Right? So, Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. Jesus said, right, the evil spirit goes inside of an individual right, and builds a house. Right? So for those who are separated from God, Satan goes inside of the individual and builds his own house inside of it. And that house is called his invisible partisan of destruction. Okay? So people, because nothing works out in their life, they resort to exorcism, they do idolatry, they do sh like shrine worship, etc. But things are not getting better. It is because people know everything except for one thing. The very existence of this Satan, who is plowing into their soul and building this invisible partisan of destruction. And the content of this invisible partisan is the 12 strategies. 12 strategies. Satan uses this 12 strategies to build this invisible partisan within your soul. Right? It's all about me, it's all about my thing, it's all about my success. These fascinating messages Satan uses so that he can build this invisible partisan of destruction within you. And because it doesn't work in the same way that they desire, right? people are completely seized by shrines, temples, and idolatry. So when you go to like, you know, Asian countries, even though the summits of, that, of those countries have never negotiated before, but they have similar temples, they have like you no know, dragons hurling down, they have like snakes, right? they use the color red, right? Why? Because they are being controlled by Satan. And Satan has built this invisible partisan within the souls of mankind who has been separated from God. And ultimately, what Satan does is, he makes your life being snared by the six states of non-believers. And we call that destiny or fate. fate. No one can come out from this with their own power. So as a result, all those who are within these strategies, no matter how much they try, nothing's going to work. It seems like they are achieving some success, but ultimately, that success will crumble, like Tower Bell. It seems like what they have planned has been achieved. However, when you actually go to that point, at a certain point, you will see that everything is in vain. Why? Because Satan has planted this invisible poison within the souls of unbelievers. So if you really know this spiritual reality, then you are bound to receive the God-given answers, and God will use your life to carry out world evangelization. Right? May you open these spiritual eyes. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 to 5, right? Satan has built this invisible stronghold. In Korean, it says, 견고한 
강력한 진 stronghold. That is Satan's house. That is Satan's partisan. That he has built inside of all people who are separated from God. And without this being destroyed, no matter how hard mankind tries, nothing is going to work. That's why there is only two ways that you can break this down. Two ways. What? Assistant Pastor, two ways? Are you heresy? There, is, there are two ways. That is Jesus' death and his resurrection. Amen? Amen? That is the only way that can break down the power of Satan. He is partisan. So that is number two. Right? So Jesus Christ completely broke down all darkness on the cross and resurrected. And that is the only way this Satan's partisan inside of every mind, mankind can be broken down. Right? So the second thing is the death of Jesus Christ has destroyed all problems of darkness. Darkness is completely destroyed by the death of Jesus Christ. How? God has given us this promise. In Genesis chapter 3, 15, when people commit a sin against God and they were separated from God, God immediately gave us the answer. The offspring of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. Right? He immediately gave us the way for us to live. Right? Also, in Hebrew chapter 2, verse 14, it says, By his death, by the death of Jesus Christ, he completely destroyed Satan who holds the power of death. Right? That's why in today's representative prayer, Deacon Jonathan says, Jesus Christ proclaimed his victory at the cross. Right? And that Christ is with you. Right? He has already won this battle against Satan. So all you have to do is plant this banner of Christ in your field. When you do Amen. so, Satan's partisan will be broken down. Amen. Right? That's why in today's verse, verse 9, it says, since Christ was raised from the dead, death no longer has mastery, dominion over him. So that Christ is with you, which means death, the power of death can never have dominion over you. Because you are within the kingdom of God, you are within the light of Christ, your background is the kingdom of God. Right? That's why John chapter 5, verse 24, when you believe in Jesus Christ, you will not be condemned. But you have crossed over from death to life. to life. Death has no mastery over you. Death has no dominion over you. Why don't we bless each other by saying, Death has no dominion over you. Death has no dominion to you. Why? Because Christ is inside of you. You must have this faith. Right? And in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil, right? We use this verse every single time, right? You may think of it something trivial or something small, but to Satan, right? This is something that trembles him. This is something that makes Satan kneel down. Why? Because Christ has destroyed the works of the devil, right? At the cross. And then Christ is with you, right? So God didn't just simply send Christ. And through Christ, he has completely destroyed the partisan of darkness that is raised within us and in the people around the world. That's why we have to open our eyes and open our heart and embrace the 237 nations. Amen. Because there are so many tribes, there are so many nations that have never heard of the gospel. That's why we went to Pakistan. Our church went to Pakistan. Because 97% of entire population is Muslim, right? And our camp team went there and did the unprecedented and never repeated mission that is proclaiming that Jesus is the Christ <clears throat> during the Ramadan fasting period, right? And the third thing that you need to keep in mind, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God has given us the power, the authority to have this living hope. 
right? Through his resurrection. God has given us the authority of Christ to have this living hope. Authority. That's why when you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, answers will be given to you because he resurrected and he is living even right now. That's why in John chapter 14, verse 14, when you pray in my name, I will do it. Because the resurrected Christ, he is living right now. That's why when you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, answers will be given to you. Right? May you connect everything to prayer. Do not be caught up with your own thoughts. Because every thought that you have will be imprinted within your brain, within your soul, and will be connected to eternity. That determines your destiny. Right? That's why you need to connect everything to prayer. Whenever you complain, right, that seems nothing, but that is imprinted within you. That's why on the 10th floor, the reason why we pray out loud is for the prayer that you speak out to be imprinted within your soul. So when you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, you can enjoy your identity. Right? You can do this prayer. Lord, you are with me. I know that. I believe that you are with me through the Holy Spirit. You are guiding my entire life. And I truly believe that when I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, you will work upon my life. Amen. Right? That is the prayer of enjoying your identity. Right? And you can also enjoy your authority. Right? When you use the name of Jesus Christ in your field, right? that's what happens. Whenever I do Shimba, right? on, my, on my way to that place, this is the prayer that I do. Right? Before I go, I believe that the kingdom of God has already established there. Before I go there, I know that the Satan's barism has already been broken down because I am bringing this light to that field. Right? You need to enjoy this prayer. When you do this prayer, what comes to you is the power of the throne. Power of the throne. To non-believers, it sounds nothing. But to those who have this unstoppable faith in Christ Jesus, it is everything. When the power of the throne comes upon you, that's it. Why? Matthew 28, 18 to 20. With all the authority of heaven and the earth, I will be with you. Right? That is the only condition that, that Jesus spoke of when he gathered all his disciples. Right? I will be with you with all the authority of heavens and the yeah. earth. Right? So when you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, this authority of heaven and the earth will be coming upon you. Right? Not only that, Mark chapter 16, <clears throat> verse 20, it says, when, <clears throat> when disciples went out and preached the word, Jesus, who seated at the throne, worked with them. When you go out to the field to evangelize, right? You're not alone. Why? Because God, who is seated at the throne, is working with you. Amen. Right? So I want every single one of you to have your own field where you can evangelize. Right? Everyone. Not even just Koreans here, but also multi ethnics We are not managers here. We are not Kualin. But we are field commander. That's what Pastor John says. Our senior Pastor John said, You are not managers. We are field commanders. I want you to restore field. Right? Compared to last year, like many of you have lost interest in the field because they're only into managing the ministry. They're only into managing their own position. Right? I want you to come out of that box. You need to think outside of the box. Right? You guys are the field commanders. Right? God has given you this job, this position, in order to carry out the role as an evangelist. Amen. Okay?
Conclusion. And in verse 13, it says, Offer your body to the Lord as instruments of righteousness. Right? In Korean, it says, 의의 병기, like weapon of righteousness. That means, when we have this faith in the resurrected Christ, what is left be before us is the spiritual fight. That's why we need to offer our body as instruments of righteousness. Because Satan becomes our eternal enemy once we become a child of God. That's why in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, after Paul spoke of the full armor of God, and the only way you can fight this fight with this armor of God is to pray constantly in prayer. Right? That is the only key that you can fight back and win against the spiritual battle against Satan. Because Satan is going to take use whatever it takes to make you crumble down. Right? He can snatch away your salvation, but what he can do is make you not to enjoy the blessings and the answers that God gives to you by making you, you live at the same level as non-believers. That's why we need to offer our body as instruments, as the weapon of righteousness. Amen. That's why you need to have the time of meeting the resurrected Christ every single day. Right? You need to have this time of meeting the resurrected Christ every single day. And we call that the summit time. Every single day. So whenever you wake up in the morning, right, you have the daily schedule. Like, I'm going to go there, I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to go grocery shopping, and that's everything, right? You need to do the prayer of transcending time and space. May the throne of God come upon this schedule, right? So that may the light of Christ be upon the schedule so all Satan's bodies will be broken down. Which means, as you prepare yourself, you gain the victory in advance. Right? And during the day, right, you will encounter many problems. You will encounter many meetings. You will encounter many incidents during the day. Right? And what kind of prayer must you do? You need to do the prayer for this blessing to come upon every person that you meet. What, mean, what it means is that you are to give the spiritual health to the person that you meet in your daily life. Amen. Right? You need to have this resolution. Today, I'm going to meet this Bujang name. I'm going to meet this Tenin name. I'm going to meet this friend. But if I'm given five minutes, I'm going to share this gospel. Amen. You must have this resolution. If you're at the bus stop waiting for the bus, and the bus will come in five minutes, and a person is sitting next to you, you need to have this resolution. I'm going to share the gospel that God has given to me, to that person. Right? Your life has to be aligned with evangelism. That is the only way God can attach people who need the gospel. Right? Think about it. You are the owner of like Samsung company, and you have three sons. Right? The eldest has no interest about the company. Right? And second son, he knows the vision of the company, but he doesn't know how to manage the company. And three, third son, he knows the vision and the goal of the company, and he has been well trained, and he knows what the boss, right, what the entrepreneur wants from this company. Mm -hmm. Then, if you are to inherit this company, who will you inherit this company to? Third son. Third son. Same thing. Same thing applies to God. If your life is aligned with only evangelism, right? That God has no choice attached this desperate soul to you guys. Right? And at night, how would you end your day? By watching Netflix? <laughs> By doing some push-ups? Right? How would you end your day? By sighing? Oh, another long day. <laughs> how would you end your day? Right? Thanks to God? Right, right. You need to end your day with prayer as well, right? So throughout the day, you may have had many problems and many answers as well. But regarding those, you need to pray 
let the power of the throne be upon those. May all of Satan's bodies be broken down at the name of Jesus Christ. Right? You need to have this conviction and go to bed. Right? And night. Morning, daytime, and nighttime. You need to have this time of meeting the resurrected Christ so that you can build the absolute bodies in Christ in your field. And may all Satan's work be bound at the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the living hope through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because Christ has completely destroyed the power of darkness, may we use the name of Jesus Christ to break down Satan's partisan in our field. Would you help us restore the time of meeting the resurrected Christ, and may we become the spiritual summit who will give the absolute answer to the summits of the world. In Jesus Christ, and we pray. Amen. Amen.